Hello and welcome to episode 187 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about Donnie Yen with someone who knew him. Before I tell you about all that, if you want to get the show notes or check out the other episode that we've done on Donnie Yen, the profile piece, you can find those and everything else that we've done at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. If you want to check out the products we make, you can find those at Whistlekick.com. We've got a great newsletter. You can sign up for it at either site. We put out a lot of great content. That's kind of what we do here at Whistlekick. So jump in on that newsletter and you can get notification for all the cool stuff that we're doing. If you're a martial artist or a martial arts fan, you're going to want to know what we've got going on. Let me set the stage for you for this episode. It was last year, it was 2016, and I was visiting a martial arts school that I used to train at. And I'm sitting there around a number of martial artists, a bunch of black belts, most of whom I didn't know. The conversation turns to Donnie Yen. And I forget what I said, but I made some comment about, you know, probably about the show. And I think in retrospect, I was probably feeling a little confident in my knowledge of Donnie Yen because I'd done this episode and talked to so many other people. You know, it's it's easy for ego to creep in over us. So I'm there and I make this comment. And this individual next to me says, yeah, I remember Donnie. Just very quietly. And I look at him and he just starts talking and talking about going to high school with him and telling stories about his mother and the times that they hung out and trained together. And I sat there speechless because I realized, number one, this was somebody that I, I knew I was going to enjoy getting to know, but secondly, that my ego had just been slapped repeatedly. And I mean, that's a good reminder for all of us, right? <laughs> and I think I've even made mention on this show of this gentleman, Sifu James Banks, and my desire to have him come on. We are going to have him on for a full interview that has not been scheduled yet. He's a busy guy. Just a couple weeks ago, though, we were in the same place at the same time. Yet again, I had my recorder with me this time. We sat down at a table for about 15 minutes, and I asked him to tell some stories. So we did. In this episode, we get to hear really kind of behind-the-scenes stuff. And it's not the dramatic stories that you may expect to hear. What we hear is insight into who Donnie Yen is and why he became the man he is. I hope you enjoy it even half as much as I did. Here we are. This is Sifu James Banks talking to me about Donnie Yen. I mean, you, you went to high school yeah, with Donnie Yen. So what what kind of a kid was he like? Yeah. He was kind of he was kind of quiet. He had to get to himself. And he didn't... I'm trying to remember like how we met. Because there was a group of us. Uh, there was three or four of us that kind of hung out together. And... You know, we talked about sixth grade or so, or sixth yeah. and seventh grade. Yeah, so, um, cause that's when I first met him. And finding out that he did the arts, we used to. We used to Were you training that. then? Yes, I okay. used to do. Yes, I was doing one corn at the time. I started in seventy two. Was when I started up. But yeah, I had a little bit of my under my belt when we when I met him and. Back then, you gotta get together with groups of people. You spar, work out, do all that kinds of stuff. Yeah. And eventually, he kept pushing me to go to CWI, RI, mm -hmm. and uh, I did. But at that point, we were closer when I wasn't at the school and when I started going to the school. Okay. Because I was looking forward to like training with him more. So when we were at, at class, but he wasn't in the same classes. He didn't. It was just. And I still saw him outside, but um, that's when I started to get you know, closer to his mother to learn, you know, working with her. Yep. So, um, but I started seeing the little differences on what she wanted of him and where, where he was going. Because in the Tautong village, you know, he was getting, he was a teen, getting involved in the stuff the teens get involved in, and she was, sure. she was concerned, you know. Sure, and I mean, there, there's... There's a fair amount of documented stuff about the trouble he was getting into, you know. Well, yeah, I don't know about the trouble, but I just know the element, you know, that that, that was around was around him and what he was right. uh, the potential. Right. So she, I I strongly believe she got to before I, I 
in my opinion, before it became a problem. You know, she, whether he liked it or not, she sent him, sent him away, sent right. him back. And we went to China or Taiwan or where he ended up going at first. But it was the best thing for him. You know, it seemed to have given him the opportunities that he ended up getting to make the movies and things you know, like that. And I guess there was a couple that, there was one, John, um, you know, it's a couple of people that were in Dottie's world that and he was one of them he took with him. Yes. You know, and, uh, but I say Dottie was very, very critical, hard to, hard to impress. I mean, other people, Ken is another one that was in Bloodsport. Yeah. From and coming across the caliber of practitioners that were around at the time, um, he was another very impressive person. So it was a person that uh, Dottie had introduced me to. Um, he. The funny thing about what Dottie used to talk about a lot was how, like his mom and dad, like how, because his father was a musician mm -hmm. and taught music, and, you know, you think of who's going to do the disciplinary, you know, who's a disciplinarian in the home, basically, you know, and, and, and you're worried about mom coming after you. Yeah. You know, but she, I guess what I would like to have seen, and I don't know, I haven't looked around enough to see it, but I, I know, I'd like to believe that he really owes everything to her. You know, and puts it back to her because. Do you think anybody questions that? I mean, she's. I, she's, I haven't looked. She's kind of. I mean, she's the real deal. She's, oh, yeah. she's a legend. She's, she is absolutely, absolutely. But I'd never looked around to see if he had, you know, any homage, any praise for her. Mm -hmm. It said anything for that, you know. I mean, I would like to, but um, yeah, because the the, the challenges, you know. That she had to go through to, to get to the level she had to study the way she, she we know it was not accepted. It was hard for for females in China to mm -hmm. learn the arts. Um, and I remember a picture on the school and was, uh, on the desk. I think it was the three: the daughter, the, the grandmother, that uh, yeah, her the grandmother, and I think. Um, but they're all in splits. Mm. Right on the, on the, as soon as you walked in, the school was on the table, so like that's like, and that was a generation of females, you know, and just that in itself, um, she taught, and that's what I think Donnie should talk more about, that I benefited from his mother's teaching, from her lessons, just watching her more so than some of the male instructors I've had. The levels that I feel I've been able to achieve or reach are because of things that I saw or felt from her. The what, do you, she, what do you mean by that? The way she expressed, the way, when you see movement, there, there seems to be a, a language, somebody you're trying to express something. If it's a power move, it's speed, if it's, and like we talked earlier about the grace and, and that combination of, of the control and the power. And the, I never saw it waver. Like with, with I got, as I guess I'm made it clear, I got more out of her teachings of movement and in, in generating power than from the most strongest male uh, practitioner uh, that's ever tried to teach me because, and I used that as a litmus test to find out uh, what I learned from her, oh, let me, let me play with you and see mm -hmm. how you use your power, how you use your skills. And I was at least able to match, stay in there, you know, with, Knowing when to yield, knowing when to... These things aren't common to men. So I, that's where the female instructor plays such mm. a big part. It shares that. If you get the yin-yang, yin-yang is, is important. If you don't play that when you're doing your thing, guy's strong, you're going to be stupid. You're banging your head against the wall. Why do that? So, yeah, getting that. And I'd hope that he would have thrown a little more back. Again, I don't know. I don't know what's out there. But he should have um, but just ceremony. To say it in, in another way, you feel he owes a huge amount or the majority or whatever. I, I'll, what I'll, I'll be bold enough to say, I know. You know, okay. I know he owes her a lot. I just hope that he's already given it back. Yeah. You know, I don't think that's the case. And he never realized how much done, you know, for him sure. by her. Sure. And how much she influenced and you know, affected people around sure. his, his group. Uh do you remember any stories or anything back from your, your time with him that you could leave the listeners with? Like? You know, like 
stuff you guys did together, you know, it, you know, sometime you sparred him and something happened or right. minor trouble you might have gotten into, you know, kids being kids. No, no, actually, just, that's what I said. She, I, I never got in any trouble with Donnie, so that, so I don't know what Donnie was doing on his own. I know when we started to grow up and start to separate a little bit, and he was hanging more in the Tauntung Village. He was, we were teens growing up in a different direction, you know, and that, again, I can only guess for his mother want, wanting to send him uh, away to regroup, that uh, it was Boston, downtown Boston, and Tauntung Village, Chinatown, I mean, come yeah. on, you know, you know, who knows, but she, she cared enough to send him back, uh, I think maybe it was just a normal thing growing up, as far as... Uh, Johnny and I doing anything? No, we we pretty much we worked out. He introduced me to some places in Chinatown that you know was kind of exclusive. It was kind of nice to be able to mm. to be to. I'd go to you know I went to eat one time with him and we went like downstairs, which was kind of strange until like a didn't seem like a restaurant. It was <laughs> like yeah, but uh, and I had food that I I realized then and there how different. American Chinese food was as compared to what they you know, actually really and stuff. And, but, you know, we, we, like I said, he's gone. He, he went through a lot of different changes. And um, I think it took, what I saw was that it did take time for the Chinese arts to mature from him. Because, you know, I'm sure he's, he's, to watch him is quite fierce. But I was bigger. I did, I did the Mundakuan at the time. So, it was it was wasn't it wasn't a difficult sparring match for me. He was fast. Donnie was always extremely fast and flexible, but uh, it took some time. It took some time for for the girth and and the, and the weight to come into his art. Mm. You know, so some of the conflicts he we had seen growing up. We're gonna have them with kids. We're gonna have little yeah. moments. It was always the the the, the power issue. You know, which when I look at Donnie, that seems like to be what he focused on. It seemed like to be something that this was a problem at one point. It was frustrated him at one point. And getting stronger was seemed to be like a real important thing to him. You know, mm -hmm. even though his skills were unbelievable. You know, the speed and flexibility he had, like you figured he could generate enough power anyways. But mm -hmm. he, he came across a lot of Americans in America. He came across fighters that were thicker. Or, and just that made a difference at the time, you know. I'm not. I don't want to mess with him now, you know. So it <laughs> Nor would I. You know, but uh, I think that was one of his. He wanted to get stronger. He really did. You know? And if, and I saw what his mother was teaching that eventually that's going to happen. You know, and I'm sure he realized it too. Uh, very um. Yeah, he wanted to get stronger. That was important to him. That was important. How he looked, you know, and I guess well, you had you had the whole Bruce thing. He was into Bruce, and I thought he was going to get that because that was his big thing. He wanted to make a movie. He wanted to be Bruce Lee. You know, he was always. He said that. Yeah, he did because you know he's Donnie was that was he was my boy. He used to come with the yellow suits or the, <laughs> the you know the, the sneakers and everything. You know, he really? had the whole nine. Yeah. yeah. And he could move like Bruce back in those days. You know, I mean, he was fast and flexible. But again, I think Donnie was on the search for power. He had a quest for power. Because yeah. if you look at everything he does, everything is, you know, that's that's Donnie. Like, boom, 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 boom. But that's not where he came from. You know, there's Wushu, sure, but he still has the, the Tai Chi, Sing Ying, Bak Wai, all that other stuff his mother taught. Yeah. So how can you not have a, a finished product like him with all of those things coming at him. It's almost like he was designed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Looking at old um, Eight Mills, black and whites of him in China, him in um, the Boston Commons when he was little, you know, watch, he was phenomenal at six years old. Yeah. You know, so. But I had a chance to see those little black and whites. You know, it was kind of cool. Nice. But, um, yeah, still doing his thing and just a miniature version of Donnie at the time, you know, when you saw him. So it was hard to tell. Like, we just, when did, was it four, three, four? That's what I've read. Yeah. You know, she right. started him super duper young. Mm -hmm. Because by six, 
he was doing it. Right. He was doing it, you know. So, yeah, he was destined. There's no question about it. But, he, like, again, he's, he's just very critical. I think he's, I don't know if that's it's good or bad, but it's kind of, it was kind of hard to get close to him because of that. Mm. Yeah. You think, do you think that's um, from a drive towards greatness, towards perfection, you know, that you, you start to see the world in that way? Do you, well, I don't know if he's changed. I don't know if he's embraced people a little bit more, so or if he's a little more lenient, a little more. But, but back then, do you, do you think his his progress was tied to that attitude? I, I, I that's I personally I feel there was a certain amount of well, I'll say confidence in what he did, and well deserved. In what he's and he was just very critical of what he saw. So he's going to compare. Um, I'm going to avoid anything of arrogance or any of that because it's not my... Donnie believed in what he did. Kind of came from a place that, first of all, you have to you have to prove to him you're legit because he is from the source, from a true source. So all... So you really need to prove yourself to him, not just in, in what you are, but like you, you can tell him something, but it would be, well, let me see it. And then it's like, uh, it's, if, if it didn't... If it didn't collect, if it didn't click to like where he came from, and if it was a version of something that where he came from had, this this was the better way. Mm-hmm. He, he was black and white. Yeah, you know, it was right totally, around. totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a lot of respect in what he did and everything else. You know, later on it seemed he was able to embrace different things. You know, but I don't think he was that willing mm-hmm. when he was younger, um, and which was that. Yeah, he, he just really believed in what he did uh, to get him to look at other things with a little more open eye. Um, like I said, it was just very critical. So you were afraid to show him certain things because it wasn't perfect, according to, you know. But he had a reason, I guess. He could show you things, you know, in a way that, okay, that's how you want me to do it. Well, that's a high standard, you know. I mean, you're looking at a guy that... During competitions, I had to pretty much do things alone. I mean, if you want the team to look good, you know what I mean? You're going to have, like, all the one up here and the rest of us down there. Mm-hmm. It just, it was too fast. He moved too fast. And then you start looking at him. Yeah, he's been doing this for too long. He was, he was, he was spoon-fed this stuff. Right. You know? Which was just one of the things that always confused me. I think, like, Donnie... He, he had everything outside of the movie and all that. He had everything as far as the arts, his mom. But you got that child-parent conflict. Uh, you know, I have a lot of time teaching my kids the, the arts. They'd rather study with somebody else. It's kind of, right. So it's just... And then taking the time to realize how lucky you really were, you know, to have what you have. I guess I'd like to see him make a big thanks to his mother out in, the, out in public, you know. Like I said, I don't know if he has... But um, yeah, she's she's his, but she's the boat and the oar and and the water. <laughs> <laughs> As I listened to Sifu Banks, it occurred to me that we don't have a lot of third party perspective on this show. We interview people, I interview people, and we talk about other folks. But the majority of the time, we're not talking about them from a position of knowing them. And that was why I was so happy to have Sifu Banks on the show, to talk about Donnie Yen, to give us some perspective. Sifu Banks is going to be back for one of our formal, if you will, interview episodes. We're just working out the details on that now. I want to thank you for tuning in. I would encourage you to check out the show notes and the other Donnie Yen episode that we did, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.